I'm always thinking that what we're lacking with technology, particularly EVs, is just a... Well, what would happen if we did this? Now, I know everyone gets accused of being a Tesla fan, but that's exactly what happened with Tesla. They started looking at everything about the car. Why do we have to weld 78 bits together to make up a chassis? Can't we cast it in one piece? Well, they couldn't at the time. They can now. But it's that sort of thinking. We also look at SpaceX. Uh, up until then, if you look at a modern rocket, say modern, uh, look at the Apollo series back in the late 60s, early 70s, and it was a massive, massive rocket, three stages, uh, all the stages absolutely packed full of fuel, uh, and on top of it was a module, then a capsule, and they shot this thing up into space about halfway up there. The first stage dropped off, burnt up in the atmosphere, or crashed down into the ocean. They fired the second stage, etc., etc. You get the message. Um, and the only thing that got to the moon was the command module and the capsule, uh, which was not very big at all, about the size of a house at all. Um, and the only bit that ever made it back to Earth was the capsule, which I've actually sat in it. Uh, they did a tour of it um, back in I think it was 1970 or 71. Uh, and I actually got to sit inside it. And it's small. Uh, if you've got a big house, it'll fit inside a house. So this massive rocket goes up and all that comes back to Earth is just a capsule. And if you want to shoot another one to the moon, you've got to build the whole thing again. And um, SpaceX just came along and said, well, it's ridiculous. Let's just recover all the, all the bits we shoot up. So all we have to do is fill them up with fuel and send them off again. Everyone said it was impossible, and for the first like, probably 16 launches, it actually was. There were so many crashes and fireballs and everything else um, that um, everyone was laughing at him. But then, of, of course, one day, bang, up it went, down it came, landed on the legs, and all of a sudden, we've got a totally new way of making rockets, and that now has spread elsewhere. Everyone now is starting to talk about uh, reusable rockets and landing them either on land with legs or on barges with legs. So it's just a different way of thinking. And I have a mind like this as well. It was really drilled into me. First of all, I was an officer in the Navy uh, and at the age of 17, I would be put in charge of um, experienced specialist sailors uh, these were non-officers um, ratings, and some of them would have been 20 or 30 years specialists in a particular subject, warfare, radar, uh, sonar, whatever it was. And I had absolutely no hope whatsoever of trying to uh, outdo them if there was a dispute over which method was best, because my knowledge was, well, zero. So I was trained in dispute resolution, where I can listen to both sides of an argument, one person saying this is the best way, the other person saying that, and I would then still not put my oar in and decide which was better. Uh, the simple way of doing it was to ask one person who, who said that the other one wouldn't work to tell him why it could work and vice versa. So you get them to, uh, to discuss between them. And then in 99 cases out of 100, they actually come up and say, actually, yeah, well, he's probably right. I think we'll try it. But if it's wrong, I'm going to tell him, you know. And so you, you could dispute, resolute, resolve uh, effectively. And I used that later in life when I was writing, uh, well, selling disaster recovery plans where you had to look into a company and you had to try and um, imagine every single possible thing that could go wrong so that when the authors of the uh, plan, the disaster recovery plan, wrote it, there was nothing that wasn't actually in there uh, some of the subjects, obviously, alien invasion, it's a, just a one-liner, you know, uh, whatever that was, I can't really even remember. Um, but you had to analyse and try and look into everything. And so I, I have an analytical approach, which is a much more akin to a Tesla or a, a SpaceX than a lot of people who tend to pick one course of reading in social media, Google or, or YouTube, and then just follow that line. I, I look at everything. And just something recently came up. I was watching a YouTube video and it was about uh, somebody whose battery was flat and he wondered 
whether towing it would recharge the battery. So we're talking here about regenerative braking. So if you were to go to the top of a hill, and we, we can all do this with an EV, go to the top of a hill if it's a steep hill. I've got one not far away and it's, in, it's on the M62 uh, when you come up over the Pennines and you come down from a sign that says highest motorway in the UK and it comes right the way down and it, it's about 15 miles long. It's a, it's a dramatic hill. Uh, and on that one, uh, on the way down, I actually got my uh, consumption uh, up to or range up to 10 miles per kilowatt hour average is three normally but going downhill there was so much regen going on it was the battery was actually charging on the way down so it's uh, it's always been in my mind that you know you can actually sit at the top of the hill take your handbrake off roll down the hill and your battery will recharge well that's exactly what this video did and he said i'm nowhere near a charging station wonder what would happen if i got my friend who had a big pickup truck, uh, was to tow me um, down the motorway at 70 miles an hour. And his particular Tesla, it's got a maximum range, uh, maximum range, it's got a maximum regen of 60 kilowatts. So it doesn't matter how steep the hill is, you top out at 60 kilowatts. But what it would mean is if, if his friend towed him down a motorway for an hour, he would get the equivalent of an hour's charge at 60 kilowatts, which would mean his battery was full well, well within the hour. Um, or certainly round about the hour, depending on which size battery he had. Anyway, to cut a long story short, he did this, he towed it. Uh, it did actually recharge the battery. Absolutely brilliant. And I had a look at that. I went and had a look in my manual for my car. Um, and it says, don't ever tow it, ever. Uh, all EVs must be put on a low loader. Don't ever tow it. Uh, it will do immense damage to the car. And I thought, well, first of all, when I'm going down the M62, I'm actually doing a lot of... Re it's virtually freewheeling down. That doesn't seem to do any harm. But also this guy was doing it and his car didn't blow up. Now, I'm not suggesting anyone else tries this. Please don't. If your warranty says uh, you, it's void, if you try it and any damage happens, then you should listen to that. But what it did, it just sparked in my mind one of these what ifs. And I thought, if I run out of charge on the road, absolute flat battery can't go anywhere. I have with my recovery, um, they, they, they will come out, they will put me onto a low loader and they will take me to the nearest charger. Uh, usually if it's on a motorway, it'll take me to the next services and there's always one there, even if it's really small uh, um, and occupied, but they'll always take you there. And I thought, well, hang on a minute. What if instead of putting me on a low loader and taking me to the charger, to the next uh, service station or next charger, what if they towed me? And the simple answer is I could probably arrive at that next charger or service station, depending on the distance, with maybe 10, 20, 30 kilowatt hours of battery uh, capacity. So, not suggesting this. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to approach the EV manufacturers and ask them, why do you specify that they must not be towed? Is there actually a genuine reason? Does it do damage, in which case we should never do this? Or is it there to protect something that is long since out of date and that vehicles today can safely be towed? Because the RAC or the AA or Green Flag or whoever it is, I'm sure they'd rather get one of these solid bars. Uh, you, with, they've got the um, shock absorber bit in the middle. You get a solid bar, you're on a motorway, uh, no work involved. Just pull the cover off, screw in your towing hook, uh, clip on the back, clip on the truck, set off, pull in the next services, undo it, and off they go because you'll have 10, 20, or 30 kilowatt hours of battery already gathered during that time. So I'm going to follow this one up because it does seem to me it will make the uh, breakdown truck's job very much easier. It will be much better for the motorist because you get towed for 10, 20, 30 minutes, however long the next service gap is, and then you just unhook and off you go again. Probably you should stop and charge before you do, but many people wouldn't. 
So that's uh, that's what I'm going to do. It's one that uh, just suddenly came to me. I have these mad ideas from time to time. I've got loads more. If anyone wants them, just let me know in the comments below and I'll give you some of these ideas. Some of them, I am afraid to say, that I thought of a while ago, I did nothing about. And a number of those have actually now uh, become reality. Had I mentioned them at the time, um, I would have been hailed as, oh, a great prophet. Uh, I did think of some at the time, uh, but I just did nothing about it. I'm now going to start doing something about it. I've got a little bit of an audience. I've got all these ideas, loads of ideas about things that could happen. And I'm now in a position where I can talk to manufacturers and chargers and uh, other specialists in the field to try and find out whether I'm actually stupid and just come up with this idea, which is totally, totally ludicrous, or whether I've actually thought of something uh, that they hadn't. And I'm going to tell you now there is one to do with SpaceX and it's one that I am going to be getting in touch with SpaceX to put this one forward. I'm not going to mention what it is now. I've got a little bit more work to do before I can tell it to you, the viewers. Um, but uh, it is a SpaceX one and it is very, very valid today and might totally change the future for uh, what SpaceX are doing. That's a big, bold claim. I'll let you know about that. Let me know in the comments below if you want to hear this sort of thing, because thank you for watching. I'm Dave, and if you've enjoyed it, please, please click the like button. Please click subscribe, we're just about on 10,000. And thanks very much to our Patreon members for all you've done for the channel. Without you, it would not be the way it is at the moment. I'm Dave.